This morning on Sunrise, a hospital's decision to strip privileges away from a Columbus doctor leads to protests. And state lawmakers turn their attention to safety in schools. What this could mean for area teachers. Those stories and more next. WCBI Sunrise starts now. You're watching Sunrise on WCBI. Good morning. Thanks for starting your Wednesday with us on Sunrise. Time now, 6 o'clock. Patients of a Columbus doctor are pushing back against Baptist Golden Triangle's decision to revoke his labor and delivery privileges at the hospital. A group gathered outside the hospital yesterday after Dr. James Holzhauer informed them of the hospital's decision in a letter. Well, the women say they're upset over the decision and want their doctor to know they're standing behind him. We're here today to show our support to Dr. James Leonard Holzhauer, whose delivering privileges were removed from the Baptist Hospital. We feel that it was uh, an unfair justice to him as well as the rest of his patients, and we want our voices to be heard. He's just, he's number one in our eyes. He's done a lot for us. I'm alive today because of him, and I'm here to show my support back to him. Baptist Golden Triangle sent a statement saying, quote, we understand the concerns of Dr. Holtzauer's patients, and we have talked to some of them about their labor and delivery options, end quote. There's still no word on why Holtzauer was relieved from his labor and delivery privileges. The Monroe County Sheriff's Department makes more meth arrests for the second time this week. Sheriff Cecil Cantrell says 44-year-old Robert Christopher Ellis of Nettleton was arrested Monday night and charged with one count of possession of a controlled substance. 47-year-old Jason Ford Hurley of Amory was also arrested and charged with possession of a controlled substance with intent. Ellis was caught with ice and so was Hurley who was also caught with several thousand dollars and guns. That all according to police. This is the second time in six weeks Monroe deputies have arrested Hurley. Both men are in the Monroe County Detention Center awaiting arraignment. An area-wide manhunt continues for four suspects accused of snatching money from cashiers at Walmarts across North Mississippi. On well, Monday, Tupelo police released information on a handful of suspects they were having trouble catching. Well, it turns out multiple law agencies are facing the same problem. The M.O. seems to be the same across the board. They walk in, distract the clerks, snatch the money, and go. Well, so far, all the known robberies occurred February 16th in Tupelo, Boonville, and Corinth. At Boonville alone, the Supercenter swindlers got away with over $6,000. So far, two white females and two white males are wanted for the robberies. If you know anything related to the case, you're asked to call Northeast Mississippi Crime Stoppers. A man with a more than $10 million bond is facing new charges after reportedly attacking an Octibaha County jailer. John Arnold Jr. is now charged with one count of attempted escape and one count of simple assault on a detention officer. Investigator Brett Watson says Arnold attacked the jailer in the exercise yard Tuesday afternoon and then went into a secure hallway. Watson says there was no threat of Arnold escaping, but that was his intent. The jailer has minor injuries. Arnold is now in custody by himself. Starkville police charged Arnold with two counts of attempted kidnapping. He's also facing two counts of contempt of court. This after he was accused of removing his ankle monitor to evade law enforcement. A student is facing charges in connection with a supposed hit list targeting Nettleton students. Well, the student who claimed to have seen the list has changed his story and now admits the list and everything he claimed to have seen was a lie. Sheriff Jim Johnson says the juvenile was arrested Tuesday. This is the second person charged in connection to the February 19th incident. Well, Mississippi Valley State University police are investigating an isolated Tuesday night shooting incident. At about 6.50 p.m. in the Charles Lackey Recreation Center, a disagreement between a small group of people broke out when one person pulled out a gun. That according to the campus police. The university says one person suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Now, this person is not a student at the university. No arrests have been made. If you have any information that could help, call the M MVSU campus police. Here closer to home, Lowndes County deputies along with federal and state law enforcement continue to investigate a social media threat to New Hope School. Investigators continued interviewing potential persons of interest yesterday. Law enforcement sent a subpoena to Facebook to get information from the site. The single threat started circulating on social media this past Sunday. A number of juveniles have been interviewed about the post, but no arrests have been made. 
Security remains tied at each Lowndes County schools. It was a busy day at the state capitol, and schools, again, were the focus of more than one debate. That's right. Funding and protecting schools became the big topics of the day. Courtney Ann Jackson has more. A bill about who could conceal carry and why was in senators' hands Tuesday. Given the recent school shootings, they moved to amend that bill and create a path for armed teachers. At the end of the day, we believe the best defense from someone that has a weapon that is trying to do harm to innocent people is for innocent people who are law-abiding citizens to have weapons also. Under the amendment, it would be a school's choice. Teachers and other school employees would have to receive 12 hours of training every two years from the Department of Public Safety. But not everyone thinks more guns is the answer. I, I don't think there's a legislative will here to do the right thing regarding making our uh, schools more safe and not allowing guns on, on, on our campuses. The state already provides matching funds for schools to hire trained officers. And it was standing room only in the Senate Education Committee. Their only item on the agenda, a rewrite of the school funding formula. Creates a new method for funding schools in Mississippi. Supporters say it's a more simplistic formula that they call student-centered. It increases funding for 107 out of 142 school districts. I think going forward, the, the fact that people have confidence in it will make a, a lot of difference. And you have those accountability provisions to make sure the school districts are spending it uh, in a way that it helps students. Opponents say the problem isn't the current formula. I think the people have lost confidence in us. Some members spoke about the concern that schools would get less than if the current formula was fully funded. If uh, Ed Bill is not funded, it's going to fall by the wayside the way we allowed uh, MAEP. And with this, in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. No. no. That'll be reported. The bill moves to the full Senate. Again, that was Courtney Ann Jackson reporting. As a reminder of the legislative process, there's always the potential that bills could go to conference. That's when members of the House and Senate meet to find a compromise on bills that undergo changes in the other chamber. That wouldn't happen until late next month. With meteorologist Alex Puckett. A little bit of drizzle across parts of the area this morning. This is V from Vernon, Ralph Insurance Skycam over at Durham's Farm. So you see a little bit of moisture on the lens there. Not really what I would call rain at this point, but certainly a little bit of drizzle or mist out across parts of the area. You can see some of these light radar returns, Lowndes, Lamar County, up into Fayette and Marion counties in West Alabama, and then maybe Chickasaw, Monroe counties into Lee, Pontotoc, Etiwamba counties as well. The more steady shower activity along the Highway 72 corridor this morning. Temperatures setting in the 50s and 60s to start the day. And uh, as we go through the day, we're going to see the potential for some more rain. Now, the better chance of rain really going to be north of the Golden Triangle area, but we can see some showers in the Rumble Thunder area wide. But you start to notice that that Highway 72 corridor is really where that rain is just not going to let up. And uh, that's going to be a concern as we go through the next few days. But as for today, the potential for a little bit of drizzle or light rain at the bus stop this morning, maybe a little better chance for some showers as we head into the afternoon. All in all, it's something we're going to watch, but the better chance for heavier rain is really going to hold off until we get into the overnight hours and into Thursday morning. Hmm. All righty. Well, time now to look at your responses for the Mississippi Peanut Supply question of the day. It is National Public Sleeping Day. Shh, just kidding. <laughs> uh, we want to know where's the strangest place you've taken a nap? And we've got some comments going on our Facebook page. We've got some funny do. ones this morning. Uh -huh. I, I think they're funny. Uh, I can't they help are. It, but yeah. snicker a little bit. Uh, uh, Sonia Clark Judon said, uh, at a stoplight on my way to work. Ooh. That one's a little scary. That, yeah. That's not that good. one's a little scary. A little scary. scary, Sonia. A little scary. Uh, Erica Ruth S Saunders says, waiting room at a doctor's office when I was a child. <laughs> I fell asleep and napped on the back of my horse. And Ooh. Deanna Bash at church in the choir stand. Ooh, for shame. The prayer prayed too long. I was tired from the night shift, had not slept, bowed to pray, and it was over. Now, I will say I fell asleep praying Me before, too. too. Oh, my <laughs> God. I think it's peaceful. And then I, yeah, I get so yeah. embarrassed. If I fall asleep at church and then I get paranoid, like, oh, the preacher, he's looking right at me. So he saw. <laughs> Erica, Erica confused me a little bit. Was, was her horse in the doctor's office? I don't know what that was about. Oh, anyway, uh, childhood sleeping. I don't know. Anyway, like that. <laughs> keep uh, the comments coming. We'll share something in a little bit. More sunrise right for this.
Welcome back, everyone. Time now, 612. White House Senior Advisor Jared Kushner's access to classified information has been scaled back. The move follows months of delays in completing his background check. John Shumo reports. Jared Kushner no longer has access to President Trump's daily intelligence brief. The senior advisor to the White House, who is also the president's son-in-law, had his security clearance downgraded late last week. Mr. President, on Jared's downgraded clearance, sir, any concerns? Kushner had been granted access to top secret information while the FBI completed his background check. White House Chief of Staff John Kelly has now changed that. General Kelly respects Jared a lot, and General Kelly will make that call. I won't make that call. Sources tell CBS News the change in classification affects roughly three dozen people. It comes as General Kelly tightens the temporary clearance rules following domestic abuse allegations against former staff secretary Rob Porter. Kushner's FBI background check has been delayed for months after he refiled paperwork three times because of undisclosed contacts with foreign nationals. White House officials downplayed the downgrade. He's a valued member of the team and he will continue to do the important work that he's been doing uh, since he started in the administration. In a statement, Kushner's spokesperson told CBS News, as to his security clearance, Mr. Kushner has done more than what is expected of him in this process. Kushner's work focuses on foreign policy items, including peace in the Middle East. House officials say the change in security clearance can be revised at any time. Well, coming up next on Sunrise, meteorologist Alex Puckett has a full look at our Wednesday forecast. And later, technology opens up an easier path in the job hunt for teens. That and much more still to come when Sunrise continues. Your first alert forecast with meteorologist Alex Puckett. Combination of mist, drizzle, and fog has dropped visibilities a little bit across the area. Nothing below a mile, but something to keep in mind for your morning commute. Might have those visibilities knocked down just a little bit. This is the view from our off insurance Sky Key. I'm here top WCBI looking over downtown Columbus. You can see sort of a gray, cloudy start 
to the day. And we have seen some light radar returns in spots. We've got some now on the uh, Lowndes Pickens County line, extending maybe as far east as Reform, and some more of the light, sort of drizzly spots in Lamar County, Marion County, in Itawamba, Lee, uh, Pontotoc County. Is the more steady shower activity. Uh, extending uh, along the Highway 72 corridor, and that's going to be a trend really as we go through the next few days. Temperatures staying in the 50s and 60s this morning, so if you're not dealing with rain, pretty nice. As we go through the day, though, we're going to see more scattered showers and thunderstorms develop. And again, notice that Highway 72 corridor, just no break. Uh, in sight for them as far as the rain's concerned. Most of the rain today north of Highway 278, but I'm not going to rule out any uh, a couple of scattered showers or thunderstorms popping out, uh, popping up the Golden Triangle of West Alabama either. Temperatures today ranging uh, from maybe uh, 68, 69 degrees up towards Iuka and Corinth, up to 80 once you get into Macon. Now, as we head through uh, the night tonight into tomorrow, line of showers and thunderstorms pushes through. There'll be some heavier rain with this, some gusty winds. But again, the bigger concern really going to be the heavy rain over the next few days. Rain finally pushes out Thursday night, Friday, and Saturday. We dry off. But today through Thursday, here's what it looks like as far as rainfall totals. Notice there may be some spots that stay shy of an inch. But the further north you go, the bigger the problems get. And once you get towards that Highway 72 corridor, that's where we can see rainfall totals really climb up to levels that would be concerning. Uh, flood watch in effect until noon Thursday for Monroe, Chickasaw, Calhoun, Grenada counties, and points northward. Our thinking is that once you get towards that Highway 72 quarter, five inches of rain going to be possible, though. So that's where the biggest concerns are with this setup. The good news, once we get to the weekend, nice weather, good bit of sunshine and temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. So we do dry out. For the end of the week. Today's Spill of Furniture and Mattress Weather Quiz. What is the costliest natural disaster in United States history? Is it the 1989 drought? Is it Hurricane Katrina or Hurricane Harvey? What do you think about that? Let's get a check on sports and say good morning to Robbie. Hey, very good morning to you. Hope you were still having a great start to your Wednesday. Tuesday night, it was tourney test time for Mississippi State. The Bulldogs had won seven of their last nine. They started to put together a resume worthy of NCAA tournament consideration. For all intents and purposes, Tuesday night could have been viewed as a play-in game for MSU to break into the big dance. As Mississippi State back in the hump for their final home game of the regular season facing 16th ranked Tennessee. Bulldogs looking really good early on. Eric Holman forcing the steal. That would give it to Quindary Weatherspoon who gets the easy bucket. Bulldogs had the early lead. More from MSU. They did a lot of their work on the fast break early on. Nick Weatherspoon, Lamar Peters, give me all three of these. No, Eric Holman with the follow-up slam. Had a little authority on that one. MSU has a 25-17 lead halfway through the first half. Uh, Lamonte Turner, though, gets things going for Tennessee. He gets the ball and drills that one. Tennessee had a 10-0 run after that to take a lead. Back on the Bulldogs, though. Quindary Weatherspoon, shot fake, triple, yes. MSU goes back in front. MSU would have the answer to that Tennessee run. Here's Lamar Peters driving dipsy doo dunkaroo to the lane for two. And then more work off of the fast break for MSU. Here's Quindary Weatherspoon. Two hands with authority as MSU trailing right before the half. Eric Coleman going to find Nick Weatherspoon driving baseline, hooping the harm. But the Bulldogs trailed 40 to 34 at the half. Second half, Bulldogs now down four. Vic Schaefer looking on. Uh, this shot by Jordan B Bowden is off, but Admiral Schofield was just a man amongst boys inside. He finished with 24.7 rebounds. That put back goes. State trying to get on the comeback trail here. Nick Weatherspoon going to drive, get the basket plus the foul, uh, but back comes Tennessee. Derek Walker going to get one inside for two here. Tennessee had 25 bench points. There's two of them right there. At one point, Tennessee made 11 straight field goals in the second half. State's three-game win streak is snapped. The Bulldogs fall 76-54. Is a humbling defeat for MSU at the hands of the Volunteers. We just had a, a lot of breakdowns on defense in the second half. I mean, we did the feeling like we did the first five or ten minutes of the ball game. We just, I don't know what happened. We had a lot of breakdowns on defense in the second half. They beat us handily, and we've got to learn from it. I mean, you learn by watching the film. You learn by uh, everybody looking inward what we could do better. And we bounce back, and that's what you always do uh, in the face of adversity in life and in basketball. So the Bulldogs will look to be resilient going into Saturday when they go to LSU. Now, for all intents and purposes for MSU, their bubble has burst. They're going to have to win the SEC tournament to make the NCAA tournament more than likely. But 
Crazier things have happened going into the big dance. All right, uh, for SEC women's basketball, they announced their AP All-SEC awards on Tuesday, and you saw clips of them. Nick Schaefer was your coach of the year. Tierra McCowan, co-defensive player of the year with Asia Wilson, and scholar athlete of the year was Blair Schaefer. Schaefer and McCowan were also on the all-defensive de team. And then your all-SEC teams, first team, unanimous names, Victoria Vivians and Tierra McCowan, Morgan William on the second team, and Promise Taylor from Ole Miss alone, Rebel on the list. She made it on the all-freshman team. On down to Clinton on a Tuesday night, AAA state champs Heritage Academy facing Simpson in the MAIS overall state tourney opener and a good start for the Patriots. Inside, Eli Acker gets the easy deuce. Heritage has the lead. Then later, Dante Gregg going to show you a little defense to offense. Coming up with the steal, gets past the official. He goes all the way to the rim with the left hand finish for two. Patriots start, starting to get on the run before the end of the quarter here. Working the zone this time. And Jared Long showing you he's going to stop that, lo that lost art of the mid-range J. Gets that bucket to go in the final seconds of the first quarter. Once again, it's Dante Gray. He's been doing a little bit of this lately. Beating the first quarter buzzer as he knocks it in. Heritage advances in the overall tournament. They defeated Simpson Academy 70-51. Patriots will play Marshall Academy coming up Wednesday. To baseball, Ole Miss aiming to stay perfect, hosting Murray State in a midweek game. Rebels trailed 4 1 in the fifth base. is loaded for Thomas Dillard. Ripping one down the right field line. It's a fair ball, scoring Greg Kessinger, Ryan Olenek, and Nick Fortes. Wearing his PF Flyers, he's going to slide in safely. Rebels lead 5 4 after five. Then the rain would come. Rebels would trail 6 to 5 in the eighth. Ryan Olenek with Greg Kessinger on second. He delivers. Lifting one into left, that would score Kessinger. We are tied at six after eight. To the ninth, bases loaded. Anthony Servideo at the plate. Wild pitch. Thomas Dillard on his horse, on his way home. He's safe. Rebels win it on a walk-off wild pitch. They stay perfect. They defeat Murray State seven to six as they are now eight and zero on the season. Whew. Well, speaking of being in Oxford, Ole Miss finished the tumultuous 2017 football season on a high note as the Rebels brought the golden egg back home. Interim tag is gone off of Matt Luke, and Ole Miss focused on improving and getting better for 2018. Tuesday, the Rebels were back on the practice field with their first spring practice of the 2018 spring calendar. Ole Miss hosts the Grove Bowl on Saturday, April 7th. Up until then, Coach Luke and the Rebels will focus on building an offense that has the potential to unleash on opponents and a defense that has to build up experience. The focus, though, will be all on personnel for Ole Miss and also building off of how last season ended. Our culture really improved from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, so we just want to keep building on that, building on the positive momentum of the Egg Bowl and just keep building on that culture. But, but really excited in the spring, you want to think about players, not plays. We really want to focus on these young guys getting better. There's such a fine line between winning and losing football games in the Southeastern Conference. And the culture of your team and the, the discipline and the environment that you create and the mentality of your team when you're playing close football games, to me, that's the secret sauce. That's the secret ingredient, the mental toughness, the, the, the little things it takes to win games. And I, I just think that's important. Other news to note from that opening press conference from Matt Luke for spring football. Armani Linton moving from safety to running back. He's trying to get a little more depth in the backfield. And Linton's been pretty good with the ball in his hands. We, see, we saw it when he was at Walnut, so that may you know, bring some dividends there for the Rebels. Uh, Scotty Phillips was the top JUCO player that Ole Miss signed in the country. Uh, he's going to be limited in the spring. He comes out of Jones County Junior College, but he should be full go when the fall comes around. Uh, Luke has had some concerns on the offensive line. They've been dealing with some injuries, but it'll just be for the spring. They should be healthy for the fall. And Benito Jones, Kadir Shepard, guys that could be replacing Marquise Haynes, they won't, will not play this spring. Either will Dawson Knox, Eli Johnson, D.K. Buford, or Devon Penniman, many of those having surgeries or just being held out for precautionary measures. Uh, expect all those names to potentially get to full strength when the fall comes around. That is all for sports for now here on Sunrise. We hope you have a great rest of your morning.
Welcome back. It is 629. Today's team see delivering newspapers and mowing the lawn for cash as just plain old old fashioned. Hey, I, I had to mow lawns for cash growing up. Come Baby on sitting. Now. Baby sitting. Daniel Nottingham introduces <laughs> us to a startup that wants to use the technology to put young people to work in its so called gig economy. Ooh. 17 year old Alec Barrett says it's hard to be a student and hold a part time job. I would only do it on the weekends or in the summer and never had time to like balance it with my school stuff. Alec is one of thousands of Dallas teens using an app called Scratch to find odd jobs. Adults list the services they need and teens see them as local gigs. Some are posted with as little as an hour's notice. You both have to draw this football. Cool. Alec responded to Amy Sandler's scratch post. The busy working mom hired him to watch her sons. And I come home and I know I need to make dinner, make lunches for the next day, get things organized. Why did you choose to focus on teens? Well, I think people have forgotten teens are great at so many things. The and app's co founder, ability, Scott uh, Bennett, to... says completing short term tasks is a way young people can earn cash without much commitment. According to the U.S. Labor Department, 52% of teens were in the workforce in 2011. It dropped to about 34% in 2015 and is projected to shrink to 26% by 2024. That's how the world is working today. Blocks of time, work, not jobs. Yeah. Alec accepted another gig, setting up an iPad. That they couldn't figure out how to do, but that was very simple and second nature for me. Teens have to be at least 14 to sign up and get their parents' permission. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Dallas. Both adults and teens have to pass background checks. Now, Scratch is currently available only in Texas, but has plans to expand to other states. The time now, 6.31. Stick with us. More sunrise to come right after the break. We've got a couple special guests live in the studio with us. Stay with us. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, yes. so you know, you can just look at me. Yep.
Welcome back, everyone. Joining me live in the studio, I have Mr. Shane Power. He is president of Water Tree Health. Mr. Power, thanks for joining us this morning. Pleasure to be here. How you doing? Fantastic. Good. And you're here to talk about the Make a Wish Challenge going on. So tell me all about this challenge. Yes, so Water Tree Health has been a long supporter of Make a Wish. Uh -huh. um, we've donated 330 wishes so far. Awesome. And specific, specifically, Make a Wish Mississippi is important. Uh, I went to school here, lived in this state. So we want to help partner with Make a Wish Mississippi mm -hmm. for the third year to generate more life changing wishes for children with critical illnesses. Awesome, awesome. And so, how can people get involved in this challenge? Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, they can go to Mississippi uh, Wish Challenge uh -huh. Mississippi Wish Challenge mm -hmm. uh, and donate there, or they can text uh, wishes to 50555 for a $10 donation. Okay. Um, they can also use Water Tree Health's free prescription discount card. Every time they save with the card, uh -huh. we'll donate to Make-A-Wish Mississippi. Oh, that is so cool. Uh, and so there is a deadline though. Can yeah. you go over that again? Yes. <laughs> These questions may be a little repetitive. So it's the Wish <laughs> Challenge. It ends March 9th. We're trying to raise $45,000. 45000 okay. Water Tree has already pledged 6500 mm -hmm. So we're asking the, you to partner with Make-A-Wish Mississippi to raise that $45,000 a lot of wishes coming up mm -hmm. between spring break and summer, mm -hmm. but the wish challenge ends March 9th. Okay. They <laughs> will accept your checks after March 9th, but it ends okay. March 9th. Yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah. Talk about maybe what reaction have have you uh, gotten just about being a part of this challenge and, and wanting to make a difference in kids' lives. Absolutely. When, when a child gets diagnosed with a critical illness, mm -hmm. that fear, that anxiety, that sadness creeps oh, in. Yeah. And what happens when Make-A-Wish Mississippi comes in and they grant a wish, right? Now that child gets excited. They get that hope. They have something to push for. And a lot of times mm -hmm. it has a positive effect on their health. Absolutely, absolutely. And what better reason uh, uh, besides that do you need to get a part of this challenge? Uh, again, you have now until March 9th to participate. You see all the information there on your screen. I believe the telephone number is 601 Three six six nine four seven four. Correct. All right. We're going to take a quick time out over here, but we've got to get to some weather now. Here is meteorologist Alex Puckett. Thank you very much, Renee. Well, cloudy skies across the area. We've seen little patches of drizzle here and there. Saw some earlier in Tupelo. Now it looks like that's maybe starting to wind down, at least temporarily. But uh, the potential to come across a little bit of mist or drizzle this morning on your commute. More steady rain along the Highway 72 corridor. That's really going to be a theme as we go through the next 48 hours. They're going to get absolutely pummeled with rainfall uh, really today, tonight, and tomorrow. But uh, as for this morning, temperatures sitting in the 50s and 60s. Not all that uncomfortable, but a little bit wet to kick off the day. More showers and thunderstorms develop today. Most of the rain along and north of Highway 278. But as you see there, that Highway 72 corridor right near the Tennessee state line, that's going to be sort of that prime spot for heavier rain and flooding as we go through the next couple of days. Rest of the area, the potential for some showers, uh, maybe a rumble of thunder as we go through the day, even into the Golden Triangle and south of Highway 82. Can't rule out a few scattered showers. Temperatures climbing up into the mid-70s as we head into the afternoon as well. So if you can dodge the rain, pretty comfortable out there temperature-wise. Today's Sketch of Sky sent it to us by Reed. Thanks for sending that in. If you want to see your Sketch of Sky on the air, send it to us. P.O. Box 271, Columbus, Mississippi, 39703. If you don't want to pay for the postage, just send it to us in an email. Our address, weather at WCBI. Now, let's see you celebrating a birthday today. Sketch the Sky is brought to you by Pediatric Dentistry of Columbus with Dr. David K. Curtis and Dr. Katie Curtis Windham.
Same. Same. Huh? Yes. Oh, he hit a couple of big games. Shane Power. Where's he from? I know he said he was. Some of them, my family does. <laughs> my family is red. Southern accent. Say your name. George Hazard, one, two, three. Welcome back, everyone. Time now, 6.42. We've got George Hazard in here with the Louds, Louds Community Foundation. George, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Scott. Hey, you guys have an event coming up on Monday, right? Is Monday the 5th? It's Monday's hard to believe it's already Monday's March. So uh, tell us what you guys have going on next week. Well, we know there are any number of wonderful nonprofit organizations in Lowndes County that are working. Our hope is that having our event on the 5th will bring those groups together in one place at the same time to learn from each other and also to help our foundation, Lowndes Community Foundation, learn more about what they are doing and how we as a group might be able to help. We are under the umbrella of CREATE in Tupelo and they will be here to conduct our forum at the Trotter Center, downstairs at the Trotter Center, in which they will ex begin by explaining a terrific number of very eye-opening statistics about the county and the city and then groups will a gather from our large group into smaller groups to discuss those statistics and try to rank ch the challenges that we face. And then we hope the foundation can use those rankings to help us make grants in 2018 and, and the years ahead. So this is kind of a, a, a bit of an informational uh, event for different nonprofit organizations. That's correct. It will start with a delivery, a smooth delivery, efficient delivery of information about the city and county by CREATE, our umbrella organization, and then the participants will go into smaller groups and be able to discuss those and rank those, and those rankings will help the foundation in the future. And the statistics that are shared should help each organization there with their own work. Right, and I know there's a couple notes on here. This is gonna take place at the Trotter Center, and how do people, where at in the Trotter Center, and where, how do they need to get in there? The easy thing to do is enter off of 2nd Avenue North into the lower level of the Trotter Center. We'll have our registration tables there starting at five, and the presentation of the facts and figures on Lowndes County will start at 5.30 promptly. So entering on 2nd Avenue is the easy way. All right, anything that the organizations need to know that they wanna to come to this event on Monday? It's just come right on. We've issued some invitations to people that we know and groups we know, but we're happy to have the public there. There will be time for input for everyone to say during the breakout sessions. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much, George. Again, Monday, March 5th at the Trotter right. Convention Center in Columbus. It is free. Registration starts at 5 o'clock. The discussion starts at 5.30. That number there is 662-328-9272. Thank you again, yeah. George, for okay. being with us this morning. Right. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
Your first alert forecast with meteorologist Alex Puckett. Dreary start to our Wednesday morning. Most of the area looks like this. Low clouds, maybe a little bit of fog, a little bit of mist, a little bit of drizzle in some spots as well. The radar relatively quiet over most of the area. We're seeing these very, very light radar returns, some north of Bruce and Calhoun County, some just to the west of Houston and Chickasaw County. We've got some in Lamar and Marion counties in Alabama. The more steady rain along Highway 72 and along the Highway 72 corridor uh, close to the Mississippi-Tennessee state line. And that's really going to be a trend as we go through the next 48 hours or so. Temperatures staying in the 50s and 60s this morning to start things off. And this is the future cast as we go through the rest of the day. And note most of the activity in the northern half of the viewing area with the biggest problems, or at least the rain really just never letting up, along that Highway 72 corridor. Now, if you're watching this in the Golden Triangle, West Alabama, south of Highway 82, the potential for a few scattered showers today, maybe a rumble of thunder, but not the kind of rain chance we're going to see further off to the north. Temperatures today are going to be in a range from the upper 60s, low 70s far north to mid to upper 70s and low 80s far uh, further to the south. Now, as we go through the overnight hours tonight, this is when our better chance for rain is area-wide. A line of showers and a few uh, thunderstorms pushes on through. This is for 6 a.m. Thursday, and you can see that band pushing from uh, northwest to southeast across the area. There could be some gusty winds in that, but the main threat as we go through Thursday afternoon is going to be heavy rain. The good news is we end the Friday and Saturday, we clear out and dry off. But before that happens, a lot of rain on the way. We could see some rainfall totals below an inch in a few spots in the Golden Triangle area maybe, but the further north you go, the higher those rainfall totals get. And we could see some spots towards that Highway 72 corridor, you're going to hear me talk about that a lot, exceed five inches of rainfall. Flood watch in effect from Monroe, Chickasaw, Calhoun, Grenada counties, and points northward towards the Tennessee border. This is the latest thinking from us as far as rainfall totals around an inch in the Golden Triangle area, three inches north of that, and then along that Highway 72 corridor in northwest Mississippi, five inches plus potentially of rainfall. And that's where our biggest concern is as far as flooding would be. Now, the good news after all that, as I said, we dry out a really nice weekend in store for us with temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, but more rain on the way to start the work week next week. Let's answer today's Spiller Furniture and Mattress weather quiz. What is the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history? It's still Hurricane Katrina. Harvey gave it a run for its money, but didn't quite exceed Katrina's overall cost. Don't go anywhere. We got more sunrise after this, but first, a furry friend that needs a forever home. Do, do, do.
Welcome back. It is 6:53. An author and community leader encouraged high school students to put aside differences and look at what unites them and work together for everyone's benefit. Yeah, it was part of the annual Black History Month celebration at Tupelo High School. Our Ali Martin was there. He has the story. Students and teachers were inspired by music. And the message. But whatever you have done to get to this point has been valuable. Create Foundation Executive Juanita Floyd recalled the integration of Union County Schools, which serves as the background for her new book, The Summer of 1969. My story is I made it because I had a mother who said, you've got to love, you've got, you can't hate. Even if some of those kids call you names and vicious names, you can't hate, you must love. And so my story turned out differently than some of the others who went through integration. Floyd recounted how she graduated from high school, college, and went on to become a success with hard work, determination, and the help of many people. She told the students it's important for them to realize they are not limited by circumstances outside of their control. It doesn't matter your color, your race, your creed. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic status, whether you're rich or poor. I fell into all of those categories. I was black. I'm a woman. I was poor growing up. I grew up in a single parent household because my father died when I was young. So what I hope that they understood was that you can make it. There are no excuses not to make it. Students and adults say Floyd's story shows the importance of treating others right and putting differences aside. In her speech, she said that we should all just love each other. So, I, coming from that, I think we should all just love each other. You just really have to strive for success. You have to keep going. That everybody kind of helps you get there, but you're the main person who's going to do that for yourself. If you're looking for good people, if you're looking for advocates for anything you're trying to do, if you look hard enough, uh, you can still find them. Floyd's book has been placed in schools throughout Northeast Mississippi. In Tupelo, I'm Allie Martin, WCBI News. Now, the theme of the Black History Month celebration was finding strength through humanity. Well, time now to take a commercial break, but we've got your responses for the Mississippi Peanut Supply question of the day. Don't go to sleep. We'll be right back.
<laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Time now to look at some of your responses oh, from the Mississippi Peanut Supply question of the day. Where is the strangest place you've taken a nap? All righty. So let's get to those comments. Let's see. We have Sheila Clark on the commode in church. <laughs> Wait, in the church? <laughs> For shame. It's like, just kidding. Hey, Jesus, you can reach Jesus from the commode at the church bathroom. Um, hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, you can't. Yeah, Alex laughed. Wow. <laughs> and <Ellen>. um, <laughs> You can get religious. In the, you know what? Let's move on. Please. Shall we? Uh, Desmond Chandler, Walmart. Okay. <laughs> Stephen Haddock's on a lawn mower while moving. That's dangerous. That's, yeah, that's not good. Oh, my God. Spinning blades, sleeping. That just doesn't sound like it goes together pretty well. Oh, yeah. goodness. You guys are funny. Erica Ruth Saunders, waiting room at the doctor's office. And then she says she fell asleep on her horse. When she was a kid, huh? Okay. Could be scary too. Yeah. I don't think I've fallen asleep on a horse. Shy Nicole in a bathroom stall at work. Ooh. Well, your oh, boss knows now. Don't tell my <laughs> boss. <laughs> well, you put it on Facebook for us to show on television. <laughs> Stephen Lockridge says an emergency room at Le Bonheur. I don't think it's necessarily that weird to fall asleep. Yeah, you're probably tired. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. All, All right. right. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.